Okay, so just another quick tip video, and this time we're going to go through the spotlight. It's just something that I feel that isn't as well utilized in ZBrush, or just not utilized at all sometimes. And we're just going to go through that. So here I have a piece of geometry, just subdivided up a few times, and I've deleted the, leo the lower subdivisions. Okay, so we're just going to get right into it, and go right here to texture, and I just want to import a few textures, okay? Um, it really doesn't matter what it is, so I'm just going to click on this, and then click on open. And you can import multiple ones, so I'm just going to go here and click on a few of them. And just open multiple okay so i'm going to select one and i'm going to say add to spotlight okay and this is where all the magic is okay the add to spotlight button i'm going to scale this down okay then right click and drag this and this just kind of moves it around and you can see as i hover here you got these control points okay or these snap points and if you left click and drag the circle to the middle or any one of these snap points on your image okay these are these are on all the images uh, it, it just snaps okay and then you can uniformly scale that okay you can also go to the edge here okay left click and drag i'm just going to left click and drag that again just to snap it there and now you can scale it from that point not the best um tip but yeah that's it's something that's there that it might come in handy right and shift z and z are the control shortcuts okay for uh, the spotlight if by some chance you don't have those shortcuts or you overwrote it this is what you can do right the button is right here okay so that's going to be your shift z shortcut it's right here okay that's under texture Okay, it's that button right there. It's next to the Add to Spotlight. Next is your Transform button. And right here, you've got uh, the Spotlight, okay, which is just Z, okay? That's to bring up the Spotlight, and that's where you find it, okay? So just in case you overwrote those shortcuts, that's where you find them. Okay, but back to what we were doing, I just want to go and drag this. And you can also drag this on the geometry. You can see the geometry has snap points. That's going to come in handy a little bit later on. What I want to do is show you these uh, functions here opacity okay this is just visually for you as the user okay fade on the other hand that's for the computer so that's fading the actual image so that when you want to apply it it's a faded image okay so next i want to go to texture and add to spotlight add these a few ones here okay so i want to show you what you can do with multiple images okay you can right click and drag and then scale that or you can click on this tile uniform okay and this is going to tile it all to one side so it's just all out of the way. You can also click on Tile Selected, and that'll take the one you've selected, and then the others will just be pushed back there, right? So the one you've selected will be a larger image, okay? And that's just another way to organize your images here, okay? There's quite a few options. Some of them are quite self-explanatory, okay? Okay, you've got these ones here, like Flip Horizontal. Again, pretty self-explanatory, and then Flip Vertical. Here we've got Tile Vertical and Tile Horizontal, okay? So you can just tile the image as well. That's also pretty cool. And you can also control Z and that'll undo just the spotlight stuff. It won't undo anything in your ZBrush file, okay? That's also pretty useful So in case you've done that. And again, you can tile vertical as well, okay? And these other functions right here next to these, these are again, pretty self-explanatory, self right? If you use Photoshop, you kind of know what that's about, okay? So I just want to show you another function that we have here and that's the paint function, okay? That's the one right here, not that one, this one. Okay, if you just click on that, it's now selected. You can see that green bar above it, okay? And if you hold on Control and Alt and you click and drag, it will kind of sort of fade the surrounding areas that you've clicked on, okay? So if you click on White and con uh, Control Alt, click and drag, that will do that. Okay, so another thing you can do is just have your color palette at hand and you've got black and white, okay? So black is the main, white as the secondary. And if you go back to Paint, making sure it's selected or activated, right? You see the green bar, right? If you just paint with Alt, okay, this will sort of erase your image, right? And if you just paint without Alt, that'll just paint white or what it, whichever color you have selected. Remember, black acts as an alpha and you can erase parts of the image. That's kind of useful when you bring an image in and you just need a piece of it and you haven't edited it in Photoshop, right? You can just do that. So that's just a quick way to edit your image, right, in ZBrush instead of using Photoshop. Okay, another thing that I always do is I switch off spotlight projection. Whenever I bring pictures in, I switch off spotlight projection, which can be found under brush, okay, samples, right there, and then you've got spotlight projection over here. So I always switch it off, okay. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to switch it on on purpose just to show you what happens. If I have any one of my draw brushes, so move works, but if I use damn standard or clay build up, nothing happens. If I switch off spotlight projection, you can now draw, okay. What it's trying to do is project the image onto your canvas, but you don't have an image there, so it's not doing anything. So let me show you what that does do, okay? So if I have spotlight projection on, and I just want to up the total points here, okay? I'm just dynameshing. Okay, so I'm just going to 
zoom in here okay i've got spotlight projection on i have an image i've got clay build up and the intensity is quite low it's around three you can see there okay and i'm just going to draw this on okay so i'm just drawing with clay build up and spotlight projection on and as you can see it imprints this like an alpha okay so it makes use of the image and it actually imprints this now i have symmetry on that's why that was on the other side and this is actually pretty cool it's a really quick way to get textures onto your geometry and then you can just do a little bit of clean up here and there this isn't the best way to do it but i'm just showing you that you can use spotlight for this okay another thing that you can do okay i want to have perspective off i had perspective off the whole time but you do want to make sure perspective is off i want to bring in some more textures and these are just some logos that i quickly did in photoshop i have a wrong logo and just the right logo if you will the one in red is correct and the one in black and white is wrong and that's because zbrush doesn't really read black okay it works like an alpha okay so i'm just going to bring the the cursor to the middle there right just snap like i showed you in the beginning okay with the spotlight i'm going to press z to bring our spotlight back and now i can snap this to the geometry right so now it's snapped to the picture in the middle and the geometry in the middle the picture is a little bit off center that's my fault because i did that in photoshop but you get the gist right now we've got spotlight projection projection on i'm going to press bpa to get the paint brush okay and you can use any color and you can just paint this on press shift z and shift z again just to show you okay and it's painting everything right again it does not paint black and so as long as it's in color it will paint that okay so next i want to go to masking okay i want to go to mask by color and then mask by intensity okay sorry mask by hue okay not masked by intensity masked by hue and this will get the red unmasked okay and then you can bring out the gizmo by pressing w and then just scaling that okay and now you've got a little bit of a 3d imprint there you can also do this with the wood image that i brought up okay you just have to mask by intensity this one is masked by intensity okay i'm going to go up here to our sub tools i'm going to switch off poly paint so we can see what we're doing I'm going to invert the mask by control clicking I'm going to press w to bring up our gizmo and then just scale that out okay just just a little bit he's not that much there you go just a little bit okay and then i'm going to dynamesh just to smooth that out okay and then i'm going to smooth that out manually and now you can see again there's another way to bring uh, details onto your objects okay another thing that you can do i figured while we're here might as well do that switch off poly paint okay we have this logo on here you can see it's a little bit jagged i would divide this up until it's like three four million polygons okay i'm gonna press Control shift and e and that is going to bring us a uh, a poly group so i'm just going to isolate that i'm going to press delete hidden okay and now we've got these jaggedy edges again i would use a higher polygon count but that's fine usually sometimes it's you're always lower for the most part so if this happens you can just go to deformation and then polish by features okay you can just click that click and drag that a few times on polish by features okay you see it does smooth it out not the best job in the world but we're going to fix that in a second okay the polygon count is still high it's not something we want to work with so i'm going to go to geometry i'm going to go all the way down to z remesher okay and i'm going to click on z remesh another thing i would correct here is i would remesh at 10,000 polygons and not 5,000. okay and i'll give you a smoother result okay and you'll see what we're doing in a second again i'm going to go back to deformation and smooth by features that looks a lot better okay obviously some of those edges you don't want as rounded we can then go to the z modeler okay and then right click on the polygon make sure we have q mesh and then polygroup all and then click and drag that out okay and now you just created a 3d logo okay of from the word logo right and that's not the best way to do it by the way i wouldn't probably wouldn't use spotlight for that but you can and if you need a quick way just to kind of get an alpha out and then just create a 3d version of it this is a really cool way to do that okay and that's pretty much it for this one i've given you guys quite a bit of tips on this one um some pretty weird tips <laughs> and i can't wait to see what you guys do with them so i'll see you guys in the next one